And so the next thing is we're going to be talking about decay, alpha, beta, um, electron capture, and gamma decay. Uh, so these are, are fairly simple. You just have to kind of memorize them. Um, so we'll we'll use the let's see let's use the example of um, let's say 28 aluminum. So so this is um, aluminum 28, which has 13 uh, protons, and we'll see how we we do this with each of the, the types of decay. So alpha decay, we release four uh, over two alpha. So this is an alpha uh, particle, which has a mass number of four and it has a proton number of two. So how many neutrons would it have? Well, it would have two, remember, because four minus two gives you two. All right, so if we start with 28, 13 aluminum, we're gonna re wanna release this alpha decay, this alpha particle. And so what will we get from this? We get 24 and 11. And 24 and 11, remember proton number defines what um, an, um, an atom is. It's no longer an aluminum atom, it's now a sodium. So remember that, because a lot of times on the test, they'll just leave this as aluminum and they'll say, oh, well the numbers are right, but this is wrong, but that would be wrong. If this said aluminum, if this was a aluminum rather than sodium, that would be wrong, all right? So now beta decay, and we're releasing, and this is beta minus, we, we can contrast that with beta plus, and we'll see that later. Um, we're releasing an electron. So, so what does that mean? So all these numbers have to add up, right? So this is minus one, 14 minus one is 13, so that makes sense. And again, this is no longer an aluminum atom, it's a silicon atom. All right, so beta plus, we release uh, zero plus, um, which is a positron. Positron, see, po one proton, you know, positive one charge. So it makes sense for it to be a positron. And let's call this, um, let's just call this B plus. And this would be 12, right? So that, that should make sense. One plus 12 is, is 13. Uh, so that would be magnesium, right? And electron capture. So this one's a little bit different. So we're actually absorbing an electron. So that's why it'd be on the left side, okay? So now we just can do easy subtraction, 28 and 12. Um, and so that would give us manganese and we can see that beta decay and electron uh, capture give us the same molecule so that's something that they may test they may say um, if we start off with aluminum um, 28 which two would give us the same and you would know that beta decay and electron transfer would also um, so gamma decay is kind of weird gamma decay um, we release this massless chargeless um, gamma particle and it's released after we get a beta decay so for example here we could uh, get a, a release of this gamma particle, um, but you don't always get it. So just know that gamma particle has no mass, has no charge, no protons, no neutrons, no electrons, okay? But another thing to note is that alpha decay, very, very weak. Gamma decay, very, very strong. Gamma decay can burn a hole through your skin. Alpha decay, you can probably stop with a piece of paper, okay? And same thing with, so alpha, then comes beta, then gamma in strength. So let's just do a simple example. We, we probably have this, this part down. Um, so we have HS, which has a proton number of 108, and we can just find that on the periodic table. And now it undergoes alpha decay. So um, alpha decay releases an alpha particle, right? All right, so that's why we would get that. So that should make pretty, pretty good sense. Um, and now this is an electron capture, so I would say electrons on this side, right? So no, that remember electron capture is different from um, beta minus. It's bit different from beta minus decay. So uh, we we captured an electron, right? And we get 107, and that is the same as BH. And so remember, in order to find um, what actual atom this is called, it's all based on the proton number. Mass number has, you know, you could have any type of mass number in theory, um, and it would still be the same um, atom as long as we have the same proton number. So always remember that, very important fact. Um, and so what we're gonna talk about next is something called half-life. And this part's important because um, you, a lot of times in passages, you'll be given equations like this, you know, very, very intimidating questions. But always remember this. 
Um, when, when you have these equations like this with ln2, um, e to the something, you never should use that because how are you ever going to solve that if you don't have a calculator? On the MCAT, you're never given a calculator, so how can you even solve that? So I'll show you a quick and easy way to do half-life problems um, on the MCAT. And half-life, just for those that I didn't mention too, is, is half-life is the time it takes to reduce something by half. You know, the amount of percentage went from 100 to 50, that'd be one half-life. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this very, very simple table. And so what we'll start off with, say the half-life equals seven years, all okay? right? So we'll have this as time, and this will be percentage. All okay, right, so always make the, the, the table like this. So we'll say at zero years, we have 100%, right? Makes sense, nothing decayed. At seven years, what do you think? We'll have 50%, 14, we'll have 25%, 21, we'll have 12.5%, um, 28, we'll have 6.25%, and on and on and on. So, so that should be fairly easy. So all we have to do is this. So these are percentages, but say um, the question asked us, uh, you have this, this molecule that is uh, 1,000 grams to start with. It has a half-life of seven years. So half-life equals seven years. How heavy will it be in um, 28 years? All right, so all we do is we, we made this table and then we just do this, 1,000 times 6.25%. And that will be our, our molecular weight at the end of the, all of this. Um, and so yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. It, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, and if you want to know, this is uh, six, and then we just move the decimal like that. And so 62.5 um, grams is our molecular weight after 28 years if it has a half-life of seven. And so fairly, fairly simple. Um, you know, you don't have to use this equation right here. I never want you to use this equation right here. Um, if you're in a physics class, yeah, you'll probably have to because um, at times they will give you questions that are much, much harder than what we showed you right there. But for MCAT, all you have to know is setting up that table and working it out like that. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.